So we're going to go to Mark 5, 25. I know you guys have been standing for a little bit, but uh, i got to stand the whole time. So you, you stand with me for one minute. Um, it says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. We talked about her last week, but there's another aspect of this we're going to bring out. And suffered many things from many uh, physicians. She spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus... Who's heard about Jesus? She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, you touch me. And he looking around, he saw her who had done this thing. Look at this. Verse 33. Pay attention to this part. But the woman, she just got her blessing. She just received her blessing. But if you look here, something is off because it says, but says, but the woman fearing and trembling, you just got blessed. Why are you afraid? You just got blessed. Why are you fearing? Why are you trembling? Knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Ooh, I can't wait to get to this part. Can I wait to this part? Man, this is part nine of our faith expansion series. The name of the message today is called Guilty Faith. I'm going to say it again. Guilty Faith. God is about to move. Father, we thank you for this message today. Father, there's, I, I went through so much this week, and, and I know it's because so many people are going to get healed and delivered today. There's something that has been in the depths of our souls from our past, from our childhood. The way we see God has been off, causing us to live under this cloud of guilt. Lord, I pray that you break it now in the name of Jesus, you break everything that is not of you. Lord, I pray that you would speak to, the, to our people, speak to the ones that are watching at home. Or, and I thank you for your angels to be here, Lord Jesus, to bring deliverance, Father. We just thank you for your power. We thank you for miracle signs and wonders. Let me not say anything you don't want me to say. Let me say everything you want me to say. Father, we thank you for taking off the roof of this place, blowing off the roof of this place in Jesus' mighty name. If you're in agreement, you have expectation that you are about to hear something from the Lord that's going to change the trajectory of your life. Come on. If you are in agreement today and you have expectation, everyone say amen. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's not business as usual today. All right, you may have a seat. Shout out to Malik who's filling in for Daniel who's out of town. Give it up for Malik. You got some awesome hair, man. I want to let you know. That was the first thing I noticed when I came in. I was like, man, who this do with the hair, man? Okay. Okay. Okay, brother. Man. So, you know, this series, this, is, this faith expansion series is not your typical faith expansion series. If you kind of go through all the messages, it's a little different than your just typical faith. Like, just believe and believe and this and that. Because God was like, I need you to deal with the heart. Because what happens is, is that many people that are believers have moments of faith, but it's short lived because there's issues in their soul that bring them back. So God is saying, this is the season where I don't want to see my people just have short term blessings. You had short term faith to believe for the house, but now you're still in depression. You, you had short term faith to get this new job, but you still can't get out of your own mind. You had short term faith to get here, but, but then you lost it because you, you have this addiction with spending money in the wrong places. And so we have moments of faith and God is saying this, it's time for my people to, to really come up and be established. So I need to deal with the issues of the soul. And so last week we spoke about a message called disappointed faith. Who got a chance to hear that? If you didn't get a chance, go on YouTube after this message. <laughs> Disappointed faith is when an individual resists stepping out to do the things that God has called them to do for fear of being disappointed. 
And so I want to ask you this. How many times has God asked you to do something? How many times has God put something on your heart, given you an instruction that he's leading you to do, but we refuse? We say no. Maybe it's subconsciously. We don't verbally say it, but subconsciously we say no because there's something in us. What if I step out and you don't show up? What if I step out and I get disappointed? We also exposed this lie that a lot of believers and people that want nothing to do with God go through, and that is you can have disappointed faith towards God. That's so many of us low-key have been disappointed in God. Like the reason why we're not able to move in certain levels of faith is because we stepped out in a previous season and something happened that disappointed us, and we put that on God. There was someone that came in God's name or relationship that, that was not there in our life. Maybe it was a father figure. Maybe it was someone that was close to us that let us down or disappointed us, and we associated that disappointment to God. And so a lot of us have had disappointed faith with God, and we didn't even know it. That's why you got to watch the message from last week. But today on this Father's Day, I want to talk about a different type of faith. It, it, it's not the faith of us being disappointed in God. It's the type of faith where we feel that God is disappointed in us. Everyone say guilty faith. Guilty. You can put up the definition. Guilty faith. It's when we're unable to step out by faith into certain situations because we believe God is disappointed in us. How can we expect to see and experience God's best if we feel like we're unworthy to receive his best. God showed me that the number one reason why his children are not fulfilling 100% of their potential is because a lot of us feel that we're not enough. We feel like we need to do more to earn what God has for us. This is what it says in Romans 4.4. 4. You better listen to this message. We, we, about to, we, we about to take some turns, though. You think, I, I love when, when people think we know where we're going, and then we just go, Arr! we're going to take a few turns today. You're going to be like, I did not see that coming. Okay. Let's watch. It says Romans 4.4. 4. It says, now to him who works. Everyone say works. works. The wages are not counted as grace. They're counted as debt. Guilty faith makes us believe that we're never enough for God. So we believe that we have to perform for God. We have to behave for God. We have to earn something from God. I got to do more. I got to read more. I got to pray more. I got to be nicer to this person more. I, I got to think better thoughts more so I can earn what God has for me. And if I don't do the more, all of a sudden, I, I'm not worthy to receive it. I, I'm not worthy to receive it. So why have faith that anything is going to happen? Did you see the week that I had? Did you see what I did yesterday? Did you see what happened last month? Do you see this thing in my life? I feel like a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So why even trust or believe that God is going to do something new when I can't get out of the thing that's old? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so what happens is, is that we begin to work and perform for God. But the scripture says the one who works and performs, the wages that you receive is debt. That means every single time you work to receive something from God that is freely yours, it actually gives you, a, a, you actually become more in debt to God. You actually uh, step into a debt of separation from, from his love. You step into a debt of separation from his goodness. You step into a debt of separation from his peace. Every single time we work and try to perform to prove ourselves to God, we actually become more alienated from God. And so religion makes people so distant from God that, that now coming to church is like walking into a museum. It's just a religious thing. I don't have any connection with his spirit. The reason why is because you've been working for so long. Every time you've worked and worked and worked, you've gotten more separated from him. Because something makes us uncomfortable, we're just receiving. We're just receiving something that we don't have to work for. It's just we can't believe it because we grew up in this life and we were raised a certain way and we grew up in this place that we call, 
United States, we, 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 we grew up here, and so everyone works, and so we're so used to working, especially if you live, live in L.A. We, 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 we're taught to hustle, and we got to hustle to make it, and this and that. And so we bring that to God. Let me say this. It takes faith to believe that Jesus took your place on the cross. It takes faith to believe that when God looks at you, even on your worst day, even in your worst moment, that when God looks at you, he doesn't see your flaws. He sees the finished work of his son. It takes faith to believe that the debt of sin that has been held against us for so long, Jesus paid it in full. It takes faith to walk through every open door that God has for you. It takes faith to receive promises that you feel like you don't deserve. It takes faith to walk into situations where you know you're unqualified to be there. But God has called you there. It takes faith. Everyone say, it takes faith. It takes faith. That's why there's an assignment of guilt that attacks your faith. We can't expect to see supernatural expansion if we're living a life with a guilty conscience. So a man thinketh, so is he. If I'm thinking like I'm this, I'm going to receive like I'm this. If I believe I'm unworthy, then I'm going to receive things in my life that continually make me feel unworthy. You attract (laughs) what your identity is. I want to talk about faith. And how it works. I want to talk about faith and how it works so we can really get to this. This is Romans 10 17. Now follow this. It says, So then, I will say faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. How many times have you heard this scripture? How many people have heard this scripture so many times? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I, I sat with this, I, I sat with it. And God had to speak to me about this and check some things. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That means every time you hear a message, every time you get into the word, every time you you see a scripture, every time you, you hear something about the word that is connected to the word, faith enters. Every time you hear something or hear the word, something is being birthed in your spirit. But the problem is, is that that's where most of us stop. You see, faith enters into your life from hearing the word of God. But my question that I want to give you is how is faith then grown? How is faith then promoted? How is faith then elevated? Because just because you're hearing the word all the time doesn't guarantee you're growing. Because we have many people that have listened to thousands of messages, right? We've heard so much truth. We've heard so much revelation, but we're still in a place where our faith has not grown. We've we've followed, you know, 10 different pastors on social media and online, and we listen to the word every single day. And some of us attend three different churches and Bible studies and conferences. And but yet we are in the same place spiritually than we were two years ago. Because it doesn't guarantee just because you're hearing doesn't mean you're growing. Faith enters by hearing in seed form. But we keep the seed and we just want to keep hearing and hearing. But there's something that is happening while that seed is not growing. That's why you can listen to message after message and go to a church full of authority and power. But you still don't know who you are. After all the messages you heard, you still don't move in your spiritual authority, in your identity as a child of God. You can hear a message about the power of words, but never in your life actually change the way you talk. You can hear messages about decreeing and declaring the word over situations and see it change before your eyes. But we still continually talk a certain way and just accept the results. You can hear words upon words. Listen, Pastor Tim, give it up for Pastor Tim. 
he's broken stuff down. Him and Miss Sandra, by the way, broken stuff down about tithe. And, and you can listen to giving and uh, giving all you want, giving all you want, seed, 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 and still nothing clicks for you to give. And it's not just here. I'm talking about anywhere. You can listen to message after message and be like, that's God, but then leave and stay the same. Like you can be like, wow, that is God. No, no, they're, they're not trying to just take my money. No, that's God. Like you feel in your spirit, that's God. And leave here and stay the same. You could, you could hear messages uh, about relationships, but still be struggling the same problems relationally. You could hear messages about reading the word to renew your mind, but we, we are still losing the fights mentally. And let me tell you why. It's because faith comes by hearing. We as a generation don't have any problem to receive faith. Our problem is we don't know how to develop faith. Everybody receives faith. You go on Instagram, everybody got faith. Scriptures and posts and this pastor coming out with this and this pastor coming out with this and you see this. Everybody got faith. Everybody's receiving the faith. We just don't know how to develop the faith. You see, faith comes by hearing, but faith is elevated, grown, and promoted through the love of the Father. I'm going to break it down. I got one amen, so it's fine. This is fine. I love it. I love the challenge. I love, I love the challenge. <laughs> faith comes into your life from hearing the word, yeah. but faith is promoted through the love of the Father. Amen. Let me say this. Guilty faith attacks the way that you believe God sees you because if you believe God is disappointed, it doesn't matter how many messages you hear, your faith will not grow. Disappointed faith. I'm sorry, does it? Disappointed faith? Sorry. Guilty faith attacks the way you believe God sees you. Because if you believe that God is disappointed in you, it doesn't matter how many messages you hear, your faith will still not grow. There are people that have been in the church for 20 years. They've heard every phenomenal message from every speaker and prophet there is on the earth. And their faith is on the same level because they still think God sees them as unworthy. And we're going to get free because we, we got to go here. We got to go into expansion, but we got to get free. It's time for us to get free. Let me show you this. It's going to get better. Here we go. Matthew 13, 20. That's the noise. That's, that's how I know it's going to get better. Yeah. That's the noise. As soon as that noise comes, the truck is here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it says, but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. This is our culture. We love hearing the word. We love hearing the message. That word spoke to me. Woo! You know, we, we share, we you know, share posts and all that, but this word is fire. I don't know if you spoke to anybody else, but you spoke to me. I mean, the word was amazing. But as the week passes, our faith never grows. Because many of us celebrate the word we hear, but we never transform into the word we heard. We live in a culture where many of us celebrate the word we hear, but we never transform into the word we heard. I don't know how many messages you have heard in your life. I don't know how many people have spoken into you. There is something that is happening, and this is what it says in verse 21. This is why. Everyone say why. why. It says in verse 21, it says, because he or she has no root in himself. There is no root in you to hold God's word because guilty faith steals it. So because there's no root to hold the word that's coming in you, what happens is, is that faith comes by hearing. But what happens is that the word doesn't go in you. It goes through you. We have people listen to stuff every week. It goes through you. In the moment, <laughs> life changing. But because we don't know how to develop the faith, we just leave the same. Faith comes by hearing. But God is showing us 
that it's time to develop it. I do not want to look like the same person last year as I do today. I do not. I do not. Come on. Can I show you how, faith, how we can grow faith? Yes, please. Can I really show you? Because yes. I thought of just by hearing and hearing and hearing. You could be hearing all you want. But there's something that happens, the revelation of hearing. Yeah. Because people hear, one person hears one thing, another person hears another thing. Somebody can get a revelation and they can go to the next level. And another person stays the same because that person has this twisted view of how God sees them. It all starts with how you believe God sees you. So this is how faith grows in your life. This is Galatians 5, 6. Look at this. Let's find out how faith works first so we can understand what's going to help our faith go to the next level. This is how faith grows. Galatians 5, 6 says, well, faith works through love. You go to the last line. But faith works through love. Faith works by love. Faith is birthed by hearing, but faith is grown. It works through God's love. You understand? Yeah. Faith is birthed by hearing. It comes to your life. You've got a, a baby of faith. But in order for the baby to grow, it needs the father's love for it to grow. And we have too many people that hear, 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 but we're disconnected from wanting to know the father for ourselves. So the only time we spend time with God is here. When really here, the message is for you to receive it. But here, it's not developing it. It's your time with Jesus that develops it. So this is what it says. It says in Romans 1.17, I want to explain to you this because there's levels of faith. There's levels of faith and God wants to take us to the next level. It says, for in it, the righteousness, everyone say righteousness. Of God is revealed from faith, there's levels, to faith. But look at this scripture. It says, for in it, meaning the gospel, the righteousness, I want to say righteousness. Righteousness. Righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. You know what that means? That means there's different levels of God's righteousness that you can experience in your life. We just look at this scripture and we just see faith to faith. No, no, no. What does it say? It says righteousness of God is revealed. There's more of God. Don't settle on this place. There's more that God has not shown you. There's more about yourself that you don't know about. There's more purpose that God has for your life. There's more love that you've never felt before. There's more of his presence that you've never touched before. There's more peace than you ever experienced. There is more supernatural gifting, talent, and ability that you have no idea about because you're still on this level. And this is what it says. It says, for in it, the righteousness of God, it's revealed to you from faith to faith, meaning in order to advance to the next level of faith, you must first get next level revelation on God's righteousness. In order for me to grow my faith, I'm, I have to know how good God is. You see, every single time you get a higher revelation on how much God loves you, your faith goes to the next level. It does. Every single time you have a higher revelation on God's mercy, his grace, how good he is, your faith goes to the next level. Your faith, hear this, your faith is not on the same level with how much scripture you know. But your faith is on the same level with how much God's love you know. We know a lot of people know scripture. Quote every scripture in the Bible and curse me out. We know a lot of people that know scripture. We know people that have left the church because they've encountered people that know the entire Bible, but they have not displayed any ounce of love. 1 Corinthians, it says, if you, you could know, you know, a bunch of things. You could know how different languages and I don't remember the scripture. It was fine. But anyways, um, <laughs> I was searching. I said, uh, no, what, God? Uh, anyways, it says in 1 Corinthians that without love, you're nothing, okay? Right, right. Period. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was really about to force that out. I was about to, <laughs> about to start making up stuff. Um, 
Thank you. Amen. You didn't hear him at home, but what he said was good. <laughs> Got to be here to receive it, though. <laughs> Sorry, we got a lot of people traveling. It's fine. It's fine. Man. Traveling grace. Traveling grace. Your faith is not on the same level with how much scripture you know. But your faith is on the same level with how much God's love you know. This is Luke 15, 17. I want to get here real quick. The prodigal son. I just want to talk about a certain part of this story because the prodigal son, he leaves home. He, you know, spends all his daddy's money, his wealth, and he's living crazy. And it just represents us that, you know, just get away from God. We're trying to find ourselves. I don't know if you've ever had a season of trying to find yourself. Am I alone? We have seasons of trying to find ourselves and things can kind of just get away from us, you know? The prodigal son, just like many of us, is just in a place where he's just trying to find himself. He's just searching for love in all the wrong places, but God's hand is still on his life. I want to encourage you right now, no matter where you've been and what you've done, God's hand has always been on your life. God's hand has always been on your life. So this is what it says. Look at this. It says in Luke 15, 17, it says, but when he came to himself, he said, look at this, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? and I perish with hunger, I'm going to arise and I'm going to go to my father and I'm going to say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. That's faith. Everyone say faith. Faith. That's faith. When 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 we're like, God, I'm, you know, something comes in us and like, okay, God, I'm going to step out. That's faith. This man is operating in faith, but not the whole type of faith. Because in verse 19, it says, this is what he says he's going to say, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. This is guilt. Did you know that you can have faith but still operate through guilt? Many of us are not seeing breakthrough because we, we got faith, but we still see God through the lens of guilt. We still see through the lens of I'm not enough. I need to do more. I need to be more. I'm just not enough. And the real reason why is because sometimes we, we can confuse God's voice with our past father's voice. Sometimes we can confuse God's voice with that authoritative figure in your life that was so stern and so strict. Sometimes we can confuse God's voice with people that we looked up to and it was like we can never please them. We can never please them. And so somehow, some way, we've associated our experiences here on earth with our relationships and we've been mistaken to believe that's God's voice as well. So that means the way he sounds is the way they sound. You probably don't even realize it, but we come to God and then we approach God like we're approaching a person we had a bad experience with. So we have faith, but we're moving in guilt. Guilty faith. It says, and he arose and he came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And he ran and he fell on his neck. And he kissed him. Faith comes by hearing. And I understand that the prodigal son had faith because faith came into him to go to his father. He knew that that he would just work there but because he had guilty faith, but he still had faith. When he walks up, get this, the father comes out and put his arms around him. Do you know in that moment, his faith grew? Faith comes by hearing, but it's when you allow the Heavenly Father to put his arms around you that your faith grows. He was not the same person, not after he just read the scripture, but he was not the same person after he allowed the Father to put his arms around him. Many of us are the same person because we never allow God to put his arms around us. We're uncomfortable with sitting in his presence alone. We're uncomfortable being vulnerable before God. We're uncomfortable because of the past experiences that we've had. But as long as we're uncomfortable, we're going to stay at the same level of faith no matter how many messages you listen to. I'm going to break something else down too. When the prodigal son came and the father hugged him, this is what God showed me. God showed me. He said, son, 
That's worship. I said, worship? He said, yeah, that's worship. Worship is when you come to me and you allow me to put my arms around you. You see, faith, you better get this, faith comes by hearing, but faith doesn't grow until you get into worship. And we have a lot of people that are after the word. We have a word generation. I want the word, and we were believing for the word, and we got a word revival that is happening, but we still don't know Jesus. We're not growing in relationship because we want the word without intimacy. We want the breakthrough without God seeing who we are. So as long as I get my scriptures and as long as I get my blessings, I'm good here on earth. But the thing that you're lacking is the deliverance that God has for you with his love. Faith comes by hearing, but it is grown during worship. Whew. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this. You know, you can listen to messages all week long, but if you don't have time when you're able to sit in his presence alone, you're going to stay the same. You're going to stay the same. That's just the truth. I, I, I can't tell you, I can, I can pop out a million revelations right now. You'd be like, what? what? You could run around the room like, oh my God, did he say that? <laughs> and then not grow this week. And I guess for me, I just got tired of, I'm like, God, I don't want to be a pastor that has a church and people are not growing. I, I, want, I want us to be transformed. And so that's what it's about. We depend too much on people. We depend too much on the person who's up on the pulpit. And we forsake the relationship with God. Listen, I will never, hear me out, I will never replace God in your life. I will never replace the Holy Spirit in your life. Please don't put me in that space. Please, please don't put me in that space. So just because you're hearing from me doesn't mean that you've had your time with God. Please don't. Please. <laughs> That's like a P. Diddy term. It ain't over. Uh, don't stop now. Won't stop now. <laughs> I said, like, hold on, hold on. Mason P. Diddy, Lord have mercy. Um, bring him in. <laughs> Got to stay in the spirit. There we go. <laughs> Either don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> Just say amen. I'm like, no, but <laughs> I love it, man. If he's, <laughs> if he's just 320. All right, here we go. I want to talk a little bit more about guilty faith. It says, now to him who is able, get this, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, think, according to the power that works in us. Right? Yeah. I've talked about this before. It says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. I want to talk about the thinking because faith is connected to your thinking. But what if you think when God sees you, he sees you as someone that doesn't measure up to his standards? What if you believe that when God sees you, he's shaking his head in disappointment? What if you believe that when God sees you, he's saying, when are they just going to get it? I want to ask you this and be honest with yourself. When God sees you, what facial expression do you think he's making? When God looks at your life right now, what facial expression do you think he's making? When God looks at your life right now, be honest with yourself and what you're thinking. Do you believe God is pleased or do you believe he's disappointed? This is very important because your faith level is connected to how you believe God sees you. Your faith level is connected to how you believe God sees you. You will never walk into his best when you feel so less. That just came to me right now, by the way. I, I'm like, God be using my rapping uh, past. I'm like, man, I'd be like, I'd be rhyming up here. I'd be like, hey, that's a, that's a lyric. <laughs> you will never lit. Oh, God, I'm going to mess it up. But I'm just going to say it probably different. You will never be able to receive his best when you look at yourself as less. Wow. Doesn't matter how much scripture you know. 
Doesn't matter how many pastors you follow on Instagram and Twitter and, and on YouTube, you can listen to message after message. But if you still believe that God looks at you and he's disappointed in you, your faith will never grow. I want to get here and then I got something else. This is Genesis 3.8. I want to go here real quick, real quick. I just want to talk about someone, Adam and Eve. It says, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. I've always seen this, and you know, but, but they hide themselves from the presence of the Lord because they feel unqualified. And God wanted me to say this, I don't care if you've heard it before, that some of us are hiding right now. We are hiding from the places where God is calling us to be, we're hiding from the places where we know God is calling us to serve. We're, call, we're hiding from people that God is calling us to connect to. And the reason why we're hiding from these opportunities is because we still believe we're unqualified. And God wants you to know God doesn't call the qualified. He calls the unqualified to experience his qualification. The reason why we still feel unqualified is because we've been rejecting the invitation. As long as you reject where God is trying to bring you, you will always have low self-esteem with who you are in God. You will always feel like you're not enough. You will always feel like you're unworthy. It takes faith to receive his promises. It takes faith to step out even though you feel like you don't deserve it. It takes faith. But once you step out in faith, that's when you feel like God has equipped you for the task. It says, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden. Look at this part. He said, I heard your voice in the garden and I hid because I was afraid. I want to talk about this real quick. Guilty faith allows you to hear God's voice. Guilty faith allows you to hear God's voice. But when you hear God's voice, you hear a voice of disappointment. So that's the reason why if you're operating in guilty faith, you can read the word and be discouraged. God can tell you something. You can get a word from somebody. And you could take the word and twist it around and be discouraged. Guilty faith can hear God. You see, guilty faith also, you'll, you'll be in situations where you fall short or mess up. And in that situation, God wants to use that moment as a teaching moment. Who's ever made mistakes? Is it just me? Is it just me? But in the moments where we fall into making a mistake, God wants to use that as a teaching moment. But under guilty faith, we'll step back and we'll say that was a failure. Adam and Eve hide from God because it wasn't a teaching moment to them. It was a failure. When we see God through guilty faith, we will miss the lesson of our teaching moment to become a victim of our failure. Let me say this part. Guilty faith makes you take comfort in beating yourself up because you feel better to receive the pain that you think you deserve. Guilty faith makes you take comfort in beating yourself up because you feel better to receive the pain that you think you deserve. The last point of this part, it says, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Adam and Eve hide. I want to talk about some real quick. This is called self-hatred. Adam and Eve hide from God because they believe they're ugly. How can I receive anything from God if I look at myself as ugly? How can I receive the love of God when I don't even really love myself? How can I receive the forgiveness from God if I'm holding unforgiveness towards myself? So we reject God's grace because we believe we don't deserve it. I can't even love my neighbor as myself if I hate myself. Hallelujah. Why can't we love people as ourselves? Because we don't like ourselves. People who are mean and treat others a certain way, they don't like themselves. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go to this part. I've got to skip to go here. I'm going to end with this. This is Mark 5, 25, what we started off with. Stay with me for two more minutes. Please. Please stay with me. Let's go. 
Now a certain woman of blood, I'm not, not going to take too long, but I, I got to get this. Stuff. I got to get this. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, as we read, and she suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had, and she got no better, but rather she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came, look at this part. This part been driving me crazy all week. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Why didn't she come in front of Jesus? Why did she feel like she had to sneak up behind Jesus? She sneaks up behind Jesus to receive the word. Because she wanted to receive the word but have no intimacy. What does this look like in our culture? She receives the word. She comes behind to receive the word without Jesus ever meeting her or knowing her. What does that look like to us? Whenever we skip worship to receive the word. I don't care how bad the worship is anywhere you go. It's not about the music. It's about intimacy with Jesus. And you know the crazy thing about the lie of the enemy? We're so after the word and we miss worship. But faith comes through the word. It's birth. But worship is where your faith grows. Worship is where your faith grows. That's why God had to tell the people to march around Jericho and worship for seven days. Because they were facing something that was impossible that looked impossible to the eye. He had to get them to worship every day, worship every day, worship every day, because God was growing their faith each and every time they did it. Yeah. Worship is where you get your authority. Worship is where you understand your identity. You know why? Because worship is the time where God gets to put his arms around you. When God puts his arms around you and you know that you're his son and you know you're his daughter, when you know that you are his prince, when you know that you're his princess, nothing can stop you. I remember that time I was, I remember that time when I was, uh, I was going through warfare, a lot of warfare in this season. As before I got married, I was going through a lot of warfare in my mind. And I remember I had a dream. Have you ever had a dream that you knew was real? Like you're in the dream, but it's like, man, this is real. This was one of those dreams. I was in the hallway of my apartment. And as I was walking, I felt this eerie presence around me. And I looked behind me and it was a demon, a very, just, you know, scary looking thing. And he was, had this weird, eerie laugh. And he was looking at me. He was like, ah! and I looked at him and I was like, in the name of Jesus. I, I was like, in the name of Jesus, I said, I rebuke you. This is what he did. He was like, he acted like something happened to him. He's like, <laughs> I was like, what in the world? So I got louder. I was like, this is authority. I got louder. I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. And he like, he like, <laughs> I said, the Holy Spirit in that moment said, I want you to worship. So I closed my eyes in front of the demon. I didn't care if he was standing there. I closed my eyes put my hands out, and all I said was, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you love me. I opened my eyes, and I see the demon going like this, shaking. I didn't even speak to it yet. When I got into worship, I put my crown on as a prince in my authority with the power that God has given me. Before I could even say anything, the demon was tripling. And all I said was, in the name of Jesus. Before I could even say Jesus' whole name, it went to like a little puppy. It just, just went all the way down. There was so much authority that happened because my faith grew in worship. I want you guys to stand up as I close out. Verse 32, I've always seen this and I've just always overlooked this. It says that she came and she got her healing. Verse 32, and it says, and he looked around to see 
her who had done this thing. The woman just got her healing, but look at her. It says, but the woman was fearing and trembling. Because just because you get blessed, it doesn't automatically remove your guilt. Just because you receive breakthrough in your life doesn't mean you lose your guilty conscience. She just got healed, but she's still in guilt. And God is saying, I can bless you and bless you and bless you. That's not going to change the way you think about yourself. I can bless you. I can bless you. I can give you the platform. I can give you the millions of dollars. I can give you the, the, the project. I, I can get you in this place in the industry. But if you still see yourself a certain way and you still think I look at you a certain way, that's never going to remove the guilt that is on your life. So let me tell you as we close, what removes this girl's guilt and what's going to remove your guilt? This is what happens. It says, knowing what had happened or he came she fell down before him and she told him the truth. In verse 34, he says to her, he says something that represents what this day is all about and what's going to represent, what's going to bring deliverance to every guilty thought that is in your life. He looks at her and he says this word. He says, daughter. Jesus sees the guilt. This woman is guilty. Although she received the blessing, Because she doesn't know me as a father. She just thinks I'm the word made flesh and that's true, but I'm much more to that. Because you're mine and I'm yours. You're my kid. I'm your father. And this is what he says to her because he, he needs her to get it. He says something that really I never saw before. He, he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Because we know how to receive the word. We, we know how to get faith. But then he says this. The reason why he calls her daughter, because he says, now go in peace and be healed. Future tense. Because it takes faith to get your healing, but it takes the father's love to keep it. It takes faith from hearing, but it's the Father's love that takes your faith to the next level. This woman left this situation with her faith on a whole nother level because she knew that she was loved by the Father. Come on, Father, we just thank you. Come on, let's worship him right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Come on, let's begin to worship him. Father, I I, I thank you right now for healing people right now where they are of wounds from fathers, wounds from fathers, rejections that have happened, abandonment that has happened, neglect. Lord, I, you know, fathers that have passed away, fathers that have left us, fathers that that we're disconnected from, fathers that that are not able to verbally communicate their love, fathers that just were trying, but we... We're human. I I pray right now that all of us that are in this room has a father. And I I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus and those of you who are watching right now, let's forgive them. Come on. Let's forgive and honor our fathers. No matter what's happened, if you have a father that's been in prison or you have a father that maybe did something horrible, let's just forgive them right now. Let's just forgive them right now. Come on. Let's just forgive them. They're human. They've They've been hurt. They've been messed up. They've gone through their issues. So we forgive, Father, in the name of Jesus, our fathers. Lord, we pray right now that you would bring revival to our fathers in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you would open up eyes, the eyes of our fathers, the hearts of our fathers. I pray that you would heal their souls, Lord God. I pray that that, that our fathers would be drawn to you in the mighty name of Jesus, that they would know you and walk with you and, and walk in power and authority in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, we also forgive anyone that has been in a place of authority in our life that has hurt us, that has made us believe that the way they treated us is somehow the way God sees us. We forgive them too in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we receive this word. Let this word bear fruit right now in Jesus' mighty name. I encourage you to get into his word, get into his presence this week. Don't let this word be wasted. Don't let this word go through you. The only way this word is going to remain in you is if you get one-on-one with the Father. Yes. 
I don't care if it's two minutes, five minutes, an hour. Like, you need your time and say, God, I want you to speak to me. Show me who I am. Show me what you have for me. Have you ever done that? Have you ever allowed the Holy Spirit to say your name, to say son, daughter? Have you ever allowed? When's the last time that you did that? Yes. He wants space in your life. Give him space in your life. And that's what's going to take your faith to a whole nother level. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let's just do it right now. If you've never received him, he loves you. He's not mad at you. Let's just do it right now. Just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Father. Come on, let's pray to get together. Father, I believe that you died for me, that you're not mad at me.